Okay, welcome to your 2025 Canyon Star front engine diesel. And the floor plan for this coach is a 3947. So first come over here to the cockpit area in the driver's side and we'll look at your equalizer leveling jacks. Uh, the equalizer leveling system is compatible um, through connections um, with uh, Bluetooth. Um, you can refer to your owner's operating, operating manual for those uh, connections, but uh, in general you would use uh, the touch panel here. The touch panel gives you um, auto level for your leveling of the coach, um, but it also gives you the, op the opportunity to uh, use these up and down for each jack separately. So, and this would be when you come to the park and you want to get your coach level, um, you would turn the touch pad on. And you can see here, we do have our ignition on. Um, the ignition has to be on uh, for the jacks to operate. So if I turn the key off, you'll notice that LED light goes out. Or if I turn the power switch, it will also go out here. So I have to turn the power on. Then I turn the ignition, the key to ignition on. I don't need to start the coach. We can just turn the ignition on to level the coach. Now, obviously, you want to level the coach after you run the slide outs to the extended position. So leveling always happens after you deploy your slide outs. So in the easiest way to level here would just be to hit the auto level once we turn the touchpad on and our key to ignition on. We just press the auto level button and you can hear the, the pump motor for the jacks running, the lights are flashing, and you can hear the jacks are extending. And you'll feel as the jacks touch the ground, you'll start to feel the coach uh, move to the level position. So it will take a few minutes for the complete process for leveling. You can hear the tone of the jacks change a little bit as they get more weight put on them. If for any reason during the leveling process you were on too much of an angle and the jacks weren't able to completely level the coach, you would get the LED light that might come on for excess slope. If that happens, you would obviously need to uh, move to a more level area for the jacks to make the coach level. You'll feel the coach making its final adjustments Um, and the adjustments get slightly shorter and shorter until the coach is completely level. So you can see now the operating LED light went off. Uh, the buzzing or, or sound alarms tone went off. And all of our lights here are flashing, showing that our jacks have deployed and we are now level. So we can turn the touchpad off. We can turn the key off, then our touchpad off, and we've completely leveled the coach. The same can be done using the manual buttons, but the shortest uh, way, easiest way to level is just hit the auto level button because it's all automatic uh, and it's based on uh, the leveling module that's located uh, you know in the coach already and it senses when the coach is level so when we're ready to uh, retract the jacks uh, we would do the same thing 
we would turn our key on and then just simply hit all retract. You can see the operating light came on. You can feel the coach moving slightly as the jacks are retracting. If at any time during the process you would see a low voltage light or if you would see the engage park brake, you would have to engage the park brake, which is here. You have to pull it or have it engaged. Otherwise, that light will come on. But if you see a low voltage light, you'd want to check your batteries or, and or your charging system because these jacks operate off of a motor that's using 12 volt DC power. Okay, we're com we have completed our retracting all of our jacks. Operating light is off. So now we can uh, go ahead and start our engine if we were ready to move the coach and uh, turn our power off and we're finished with the leveling. So we'll turn that off. And just in front of the leveling system is our mirror adjustments. Um, you want to make sure before you travel that your left and right mirrors are in a position where you can see uh, to the rear and on the sides of the coach. If there's any frost or any moisture on the mirrors, we can turn the mirror heat on. The heater and the mirror will melt or dissipate the moisture or frost. Ice, if that's on, it's illuminated. And then the heat pad under the mirror is on and will take care of that moisture. Um, if you're if you don't have any moisture um, or any issue with frost, ice, you can just leave that off. Once you've made your adjustments left, right, up and down to each mirror, left and right, put that adjustment knob in the center so that it, in case you inadvertently bump those, it won't change the settings that you made. In front of that, we have our cup holder and we have our uh, charging station for our phone here. Just set your phone there and it will charge. We have the headlights and marker lights on or automatic. So if we go to the left, then they are on automatically. Zero is off. That's just the marker lights, parking lights, and then the headlights on uh, switch there. Below that, we have our parking brake. We always want to set the parking brake to on or uh, we want to pull it towards us as we're seated. When you pull it towards you, that locks the brakes of the coach so it doesn't move. When we're ready to travel, we've got our engine running. To release the parking brake so that you can move the coach, you just press in and that releases the brakes so now you can put your coach into drive or reverse and you would be able to move the coach. But if we're parked or we want to stop and get out of the coach, we always want to pull the parking brake and that sets the brakes. Then we always want to put the coach in neutral after we set the parking brake so that it doesn't move. The lever just below the parking brake is the hood release for the front of the coach. So to release that hood, just pull back and that will release the front hood. Just below that, there's a pedal here. When you press down, now you can see my wheel wants to move automatically forward. It's got some spring tension so that moves out of your way. When you get into the driver's seat, you can move that and you can adjust it, the tilt, wherever you like uh, before you drive. Once you have it adjusted where you like, then you release your foot and it locks it into place. So press down, unlock, move to where you like, release, and it locks. Or you can press it and just move it all the way up out of your way 
when you exit the driver's seat. So just to, uh, on our left turn signal here, we have additional controls uh, for the headlights, for the wipers, and for the wiper wash. So wiper wash, just you press, push that in, and that will put your wipers into a wash cycle. You can adjust the speed of the wipers here. This is intermittent here and off. Headlights here, if we have our headlights turned on, you can see there's an indicator of the bright lights or dim lights. So I can turn it on bright headlights or dim right there. Left signal, right turn signal. On the steering wheel, uh, there is uh, our cluster on the left. Our cluster is what you see here. The home screen, if you press the home screen, that's going to give your selection for what you can view on this glass dash. This, is, of course, is a Freightliner glass dash. When I press the home screen, I can see gauges, fuel economy, uh, trip one and two, um, my vehicle settings, diagnostics, and menu. And to scroll to any one of those, I just press the arrow down or up. And then once I get to the setting I like to change or view, then I press the center button, which is okay. So I wanna view diagnostics and I press diagnostics. Now I can see faults, internal diagnostics, transmission, prognostics, system information. So which one of those I would like to view, then I again go moving the arrow. Let's say I wanted to look at the transmission. I press OK again, and there I can see filter status and my oil life. If there was an issue with the oil level, it would be displayed. So if I want to return back to the home screen, I can just press the home button and I'm back. So any one of those, as soon as you are highlighted on it, just press the OK and then you can select up or down in those categories. Engine loads, gears, oil pressure, coolant, turbo boost. The small icon on the left here of the cluster is your favorites selection. And if you press and hold that for five seconds in any one of these menus, then it pairs with that so that you can quickly press it and go back to that setting. In this case, I paired it with my Bluetooth so I could pair with my phone so I could make calls quickly. So it doesn't matter which screen you go to, as long as you're on that screen and you press that for five seconds, it pairs with that screen. So then no matter if you're at your home screen looking at any one of the other menus, if I decide, well, I want to pair my phone again, I can just press that button and I'm back to my Bluetooth pairing. Obviously the, the center is your horn and on the right side of the wheel is another cluster which is for your uh, setting your cruise control and canceling it. So to set my cruise control you can see here uh, I don't have any RPMs but the icon that you see here will appear if my engine is on and I'm running um, uh, on the highway. I press that and then I'll be able to set my speed or resume. If I want to cancel my cruise, just press the center button to cancel it. The small button on the right is for flashing my marker lights. So I can flash those marker lights if my lights are on or off, they will flash. Um, this is your telephone. If you've paired uh, your phone with Bluetooth, like we were talking about here, if you pair your phone, then you'll be able to make a call here hands-free and then hang up. 
So this, this is how the glass dash looks when it's off, but as soon as you turn the ignition one click to the right without starting the engine, you'll be able to see the glass dash appears and all the icons are illuminated. And whenever you make an adjustment to uh, the lights, turn signals, or other functions on the wheel, that icon will appear for what adjustments you just made. So again, we looked at the turn signal um, or any of the other functions, they will come on. Starting at the left, you've got your um, RPM indicate, indicator. You've got your home screen. Obviously, that's this is where your home screen is at and all your selections are made here. We, we can see here that our parking brake is on. We have no RPMs because the engine is off. Over on the left is our coolant temperature for our engine. Our pounds per square inch for our oil, oil pressure trip meter, engine fuel, which that's a diesel, and it says ultra low sulfur diesel only. We have our uh, distance to empty here, our battery voltage, um, our PSI indicator, um, front and rear, or one and two, and as we talked about earlier, and whenever we make an adjustment or turn something on, like our headlights, we get the indication here. Moving over uh, to the right side of the wheel, uh, to turn the wheel, we would need to have the engine on to help assist. So if we turn our wheel just a little bit, we can see on the right side here, there's uh, another adjustment for air brake and drive or reverse and for shifting here, manual. So those adjustments are uh, made here. You can see whenever I make an adjustment here, then I'll be able to see if I, if I hold the brake down and I press and I go to drive, you can see it goes to D1, neutral, or reverse and again this is manual or automatic shift here on the side that's uh, that's our engine brake and how much our brake is adjusted uh, we can make those adjustments for our engine brake right here just in front of the shift and brake lever on the right side of the wheel, there's your emergency hazards. So you can press that and they'll come on without the ignition key on. So, and just press it again to turn them off. So we've moved over here to the center of our dash and you can see here we're scrolling through the menu. So in our, this is actually, um, a multifunction radio system and when you press the menu button you'll see the different selections you can make we were at the Bluetooth and we'll go back there in a minute but you've got your radio and you can tune your radio to selections you like you can go to your media center and make your selections here You've got Sirius XM, no signal because we're in a building. There's Bluetooth where we were, and what you want to do is make sure your Bluetooth is on in your phone, but then you can pair, what you'll do is you'll search for that number on your phone. You can see here, I can see that number that's on the screen. Press that one and then you'll pair the radio core with your phone. Mine is called iPhone 2, so I would be able then, you have to allow it in your phone, but now I've connected my phone to the radio core so I can play music 
on my phone through the radio system, um, make telephone calls, um, everything that the Bluetooth offers I can make now that I've connected. So you have to make that connection first, then you can use your phone to make calls hands-free here on the dash. So if we go back, we have additional um, plugs. We have auxiliary plugs. One that you'll probably use a lot is your camera control. So if we're here at the, the menu and we press camera control, we have selections of our camera. Our camera view is on the right. What we see from the cameras outside, but we can change this view by pressing any one of these selections. So this is my right side of the coach. This is my left side of the coach. And those will automatically come on when you're driving and you turn right with the right turn signal or left. For your left turn signal. Whenever you put your coach in reverse, the reverse or rear camera will come on. But you can make those selections manually just by pressing it, uh, going to the camera control. iPod um, navigation. Now you can see there's navigation here. If you're in the menu and you press nav, you have to accept and now you, you are using the navigation system and GPS uh, signal um, through the radio core. So you can either press navigation here, or if you're in the menu selection, you can press navigation there. And then of course, you've got a menu and you can set your routes um, or use the routes that are already preset. Our last uh, selection is our setup. And of course, you can go through the setup screen and set up your system um, to the way you like um, and the settings you like um, for, let's see, there's only two page, there's only one page in that one. But anyway, you can go through and go to each one of these icons and preset the a system to the way you like. There is, if you look at the bottom of the screen, one that's called house mode. So this is the button that you want to press. You can see how it highlighted to a, a yellow bar on the left. That means your house mode is on. Whenever your house mode is on, uh, that means that you could go to the outside entertainment center and you would hear whatever you're playing for music outside. So you have to have the house mode on in order to hear the entertainment center radio selection that you've made here. So if you don't want to hear the radio here outside at the entertainment center, then leave the house mode off. So just leave that off and then you could make the selection for the television outside. Uh, there is a dim switch here uh, for bright or dim. There is a favorites button here where you can select your favorites. To turn this screen on the left off, you can just press and hold here. The volume is to the right, but uh, you can press release. And then you see the splash screen here. That means that it's off. Press it again and that turns it on. It takes a second for it to power up. You can also make setting adjustments here for your camera view, um, bright or dim. You can see it's changing brighter, dimmer, contrast, color, and then there's off. So we've got dimming, brightness, and contrast, and color. And you can independently turn that screen off as well. Uh, moving down here, you've got your, obviously, your ignition key here. The first click 
is ignition on and then when you turn it again that's starting the engine. You have your overhead fans on, off, and low. You have to have your ignition on to hear that. So you can hear my fans in the overhead are on. Those are used to move the air in the front windshield area for defrosting. There's off in the center or high fans at the top. I have my dome light above us. My visor is the shade in front of the nightshade. Then you have your nightshade here. If you'll notice, I've got the key ignition turned on. So if I bring the nightshade up and then try to go back down, it won't go down. It stays at the halfway point. That's a safety feature that Numar builds in. So you have to have your key off or ignition off in order for you to move that shade all the way down. That's just in case you're driving and you have your key on, you don't want that shade to come down. Battery boost. This is going to help you start your engine if for some reason your chassis batteries might be low uh, and they might need a boost. You would hold that down for 60 seconds and that connects the house batteries with the chassis battery and helps boost them to start your engine. Just to the right of that we have our generator start stop switch. If you press and hold the start in the up position, you'll see the light flashing. You'll hear the priming and preheat starting in the generator, and then it'll start up. If you are not plugged into shore power and you need to run a 120 volt appliance, start your generator. That will also charge your batteries if your inverter is turned on. When you're done with the generator and you want to shut it off, just press stop. The cluster to the right here on the bottom is for our heating and air conditioning in the cockpit area only. So when you're driving and you want to use the, the cooling system or the heating system from the engine, then you would turn this to the fan setting you like. As long as this is turned on to at least number one, then you'll see the settings here that you can turn on if the key is engaged. So the snowflake is for air conditioning. So if I press that, you'll see the little LED light comes on that tells you that your air conditioning compressor is turned on. And as long as there is refrigerant in the system, uh, you'll have cooling. Now, to get the cooling a little bit faster in the cockpit area, if you press the recirculate button, then the air that's in the coach will stay in here and cool down faster. If you don't press the recirculate, then you get some air from the outside mixed in. It'll still cool, but just not as fast. So for faster cooling, and faster heating, press the recirculate. If you need to defrost, it's sometimes better just to let a little bit of fresh air come in and not recirculate. To turn the air conditioning off, just press and the LED light goes out. Higher fan speeds, just turn to higher setting. Warm or cold, you can run the compressor uh, and uh, you can leave it in the warm mode if you're defrosting. Um, but for cooling, you want to have this all the way to the left, and then you make your selection of which position you want the warm or cool air to come out. This is for defrost over here, defrost floor, just floor only, floor and mid-level, and then you've got mid-level only here. 
turning it off is just going to zero. The ignition has to be on for this fan to work. Just below that, we have another storage drawer, and this is the panel for the engine access. So you just want to rotate these counterclockwise, and this panel will lift out for servicing the engine. There's an additional panel here for the same to get down in servicing the engine compartment. Just above the driver's seat in the overhead compartment, you have your satellite prep plate and 120 volt plug. So if you do your satellite prep, you can add a satellite and then plug in your receiver here and mount that here. You have your Wi-Fi Ranger, so that's uh, to connect uh, to your um, uh, in-home um, phone or other computer devices, and there's an antenna for this router at the top of the coach. Just below that, you've got your Starlink. Uh, your Starlink, of course, is on the roof. This is more storage compartments going around. These shades are all manual, so if you pull down and release, you see here uh, you can stop and it will stay locked in position. This is your passenger window to unlock and open. Just lift and then pull the window open. You have a screen here. Close and then relock. Just below that, we've got our map light and phone charger. Just lay your phone here to charge. Behind that, we have our 120 volt outlet and USB uh, station charging. And near the floor is an LP detection uh, warning system. So um, there's an LED light that's on that tells you that it's working, it's in operation. If there was an LP issue or leak in the coach, that would uh, signal a uh, warning sound alarm. Both the driver and the passenger seat are powered with 12 volt motion, forward and reverse, up and down. It moves the whole base. Tilt, it tilts the whole seat forward and back. And there is a latching release for the entire seat to rotate towards the living room area. So as long as my seat back is forward enough, so if I want to make sure my seat is out of the way from the couch and the back is not going to hit, now I can release this lever and I'll be able to turn the entire seat over towards the living room area. So after I'm done, if I'm in this position, I want to move it back to travel. I just want to move the arm rest back. As I rotate the seat around, it will automatically lock in the forward position once it's straight forward. You can feel it locked. On the passenger seat, there is a footrest here, and the lever is the same type of levers, just on the right side. So if I pull that lever on the right side, my footrest will come out here. Obviously, there's not much room for the footrest to come out in this position, but if we had our seat rotated this way, then I could open the footrest out into the living room area. So the operation for the adjustments for the driver's seat are the same as the passenger seat, except there is no footrest. So we still have the same forward and reverse tilt. And we have the release for our seat back. 
So on the left hand side of the driver's seat only, there is a small rocker switch for the lumbar support. If you press that switch forward, you'll feel the lumbar moving. If you press it the opposite direction, it retracts. There is a latch release here. So if we pull that, we can rotate this seat around towards the living room area. Once we move as far as we can to get forward of the wheel, we can just move our seat forward a little and then finish rotating around. When we're done with having a seat face the living room area, we just rotate it back this way. And it automatically locks into place. So moving over into the living room area, uh, we have our overhead cabinets here. Um, you have your spare router for your Starlink. More storage space here. And just below that, the sofa is a manually operated footrest here. So just grab here, lift up, and that extends a footrest. Then when you're finished, just push down and it closes. Same with this side. You just lift up here and the footrest comes out. To close it, just push down to close. So moving over to our front entrance door, we've got our fantastic vent. Our fantastic vent can be turned on and off here. You can hear it turn on. The vent is opening in the kitchen area. And of course we can change the speeds to the fan here, slow the speed down. If we want to override the rain sensor, just press and hold this bottom right corner button for three seconds and the red LED will come on, meaning that the vent will open, the lid will open and the fan will come on even if the rain sensor is slightly moist or wet, which can happen even though it might not be raining, you can override. To turn the override off, just press and hold that for another three seconds and that reactivates our rain sensor. To turn it off, just press here the top and that turns it off. Our ceiling lights, um, all lights off and on. And our patio light is here. To turn on the cargo lights for the baggage light compartment outside, there's a switch just underneath the fire extinguisher. So as you open the door to turn on those lights, the, this is the master switch, just turn that on to turn on your cargo lights. So in the overhead compartment, just above the door, we have our power control system, central monitor panel. This panel is uh, going to tell you what power source you are on. Currently, we're on our 50 amp service. To scroll through the panel and see the other settings, you just go down arrow, it gives you line statuses, line one and line two, because we're on 50 amp. If we go back to the up arrow, you can see here it scrolls back up the opposite direction, line one and line two. If at any time the load shed status page is being viewed, if any of these items in the load status say off, see right now they're all on, that would mean that the automatic load shedding system has turned that block heater or that garage air conditioner or that bedroom air conditioner off. It may appear to be on because the fan might be running, but the compressor is what's being load shed on those air conditioners. So again, if you see that they're on, 
typically around 50 amp and they wouldn't need to be load shed. But if we were plugged into a smaller cord where this automatically will switch to a 30 amp setting, then you would probably start to see some of these loads being shed and those appliances would not be able to come back on until you either turn the generator on or you were plugged back into 50 amp service. Just to the right of our load management system is our Xantrex inverter. The inverter powers up the appliances in the kitchen, like the refrigerator, so that we can operate the refrigerator even though we might not have the generator running or be plugged into shore power. So if we were dry camping and we wanted the refrigerator to be on, we would make sure that our inverter was turned on. The other function that the inverter does is it charges the batteries. So we want to make sure if we're plugged in or the generator's running and we need our batteries to charge that our inverter is turned on here. If our inverter is off, we're not going to get battery charging and our appliances in our kitchen are not going to operate. Just to the right of that, we have our water heating system, our Truma Aqua Go. Currently, it's set to off. To turn it on, we would just go to one of the settings here at the top. The top one, the icon is showing the temperature setting one and two. Uh, the settings at the very bottom are for cleaning. Just refer to your owner's manual for the uh, cleaning that's done um, yearly. So you don't want to go into the cleaning mode and then back into operating mode because there's a couple hour delay. So only go into the cleaning mode when you're ready to clean the system out. There's a WineGuard satellite system switch on and off. Just below that, you have your block heater or preheat. So you can preheat your engine on cold start days. You don't want to start your engine on uh, if it's really cold outside before you turn your block heater on. Let your block heater run for a good half hour before you start your engine. We have our on and control light switch. Lights on, lights off. That's the LED lights on the front rail or the bottom part of the uh, leading rail of the awning, the main patio awning, and then open and close. So if we want to extend it, that's opening, press down. If we want to close or retract, we just press the retract button. And, that, and this is a 120 volt operated awning. So you'll either need to be plugged in, generator on, or you'll have to have the inverter on to open and close your main patio awning. Just to the left of that is our television over the air antenna control. If we turn it on, you can see it scans for channels automatically. If we have the over the air antenna turned on here and illuminated, it will show the number of channels it's found. We can make slight adjustments left or right with these buttons here. If the over the air antenna is on, that means you won't be able to view the cable network that you might plug into for the cable channels. You have to have this off if you want to view cable. So just keep that in mind. Over the air, you have this turned on. But if you're going to watch cable, let's say you have cable connections at your park, then you want to make sure this is off to view cable. Just to the left of the wine guard antenna is our step. You can hear I can override the step just by pressing this button. What that does is it keeps the exterior step at the door open whether or not the door is open or closed. So you might want to just leave the step override switch on if you're getting in and out of the coach often 
because otherwise the door, every time you open the door, the steps go out. When you close the door, the steps come in. The last switch that we'll talk about is your battery disconnect. This is for your house batteries, not chassis. These are your batteries that operate the lightings and functions in your coach. If you turn this switch off, the red light will go out and the lights will go out in the coach. Then you would have to turn your light switch back on when you turn this back on. So when you initially come into your coach to get things to turn on and operate, you have to press this to on and this light will need to illuminate and then you'll be able to operate your 12 volt controls in the coach. When you're going to store your coach for a certain length of time, you would turn this off, just press it once, it would go out, and that would be saving your house batteries uh, for extended storage periods of more than a few days. Just above our step switch here is our slide out switch. The slide out is a 12 volt operated motor that moves the slide room in and out. If I want to move the slide room out, I would rock the rocker switch to the out or down position. Moving it to the in position would retract the slide out if I want to move the slide room in or store it. Refer to your owner's manual because you don't want to operate this switch until you've checked your reveals. We'll show you how to do that outside when we're looking at the um, Z trim and the fascia trim. You want to make sure there's clearance so that when the slide moves, uh, we have good clearance and there's nothing in the way of the slide room. So before you extend or put your slide room out, you want to make sure to go outside and look sure, make sure there's nothing in the way of the slide room movement. And the slide room is typically extended before you put your equalizer jacks down. Uh, we want to do it that way because the coach needs to be uh, on an air ride suspension before the slide is extended out to the out position. And then after it's extended out, when you would operate the jacks, then the jacks would be holding the coach in the level position and the airbags would be deflated. So as you enter the half bath, you can touch this panel. And these are all the controls uh, that mirror the same controls that are on your big 10 inch panel. So I can go in here to the living room, kitchen, off door side bedroom, ceiling lights, vanity lights, and if I touch any one of those, it's going to control those ceiling lights in that room. If I go to kitchen, it'll also control those. Bath, it's going to control the ceiling lights here in the bathroom. Just remember that if you want those to come on and they're gray, you have to press it and it turns red to come on. So that's um, same with all lights on, all lights off. This is the master. There's a home uh, position here. This will tell you what your tank levels are. Um, or we can control our AGS or our HVAC in the same way that the large panel does. So we can go through and you know, we can turn on living room or bedroom air conditioning or heat. Uh, just remember that if we turn the on-off switch to the bedroom or the living room, it turns it on when it's red. So you have to have that red before you make your adjustments to your temperature, and uh, that will control your heating and cooling. So if we go back to the home screen, uh, you can choose either one. This, this is our, these are our tank levels. We can turn our water pump on just by pressing the water pump button. Our automatic generator start, we can turn that on, but we have to press the on button for our AGS to come on and work. When any of these are highlighted red, that means that those functions are on. Right now, the ones that are gray are off because you can see 
we have shore power um, that's plugged in. So we don't, the generator, the generator wouldn't need to be on or the AGS wouldn't need to turn the generator on. Just below that, the demand. If we have a demand for HVAC or if we need our house or chassis batteries charged, we'll need to set a duration time for that charging to take place when it drops below those voltages. If we need to set quiet time, we just go in here and we can set our quiet time up by going to set up. And now we can set our quiet time from whatever hour to whatever hour, AM to PM. So we'll go back to our home screen. If you need to set the time of the day, you'll have to go into the HVAC setting screen, which is here. So you'll press the HVAC. Once you're in the HVAC screen, go to setup here, and then you can go to set time. So we can set the time of day here and the date in case it's off uh, for when you uh, start using your panels. So once you set that, you can go either to the home screen or scroll back. There's other settings you can in, and you can enable enable the run um, weekly or a, AGS. If you uh, don't have it highlighted red like that, it won't come on. And then of course you can just go back to the home screen there. If you need more instructions on operating, just refer to your owner's manual for the uh, touch, pan, uh, touch panel uh, here in the bathroom. They're basically the same as the 10 inch one in the living room. There's another one just like this in the coach, the small, the same size uh, that's in the bedroom um, up on the bottom side of the cabinets as you're laying in bed, you'll be able to operate uh, that panel just like this one. So when you look at your ceiling, you'll notice there are sets of louvers here. There's louvers with filters on the passenger side, and there's louvers here without filters on the driver's side. So the discharge air that's coming from the air conditioners or the rooftop heat pump air conditioners, uh, they heat and cool. The air comes down here. The air that's coming down goes back up through the filter into the air conditioner and then back around. So all of the air is filtered here going through these filters. So you want to keep these filters clean. To clean the filter, you can um, use compressed air to blow the dust off and then you'd want to wash the filter in warm soapy water and then rinse it and squeeze out the, the uh, water and then let it air dry. After it's air dried and clean, then we put it back in place and then put our, our louvers back up. Now there is an additional filter in this assembly here. You'll notice there's four screws here and a filter and another four screws here and a filter. So these two filters need to be removed by taking out those four screws and then cleaned and then put back in place. And those should be done at the same time these are done and the ones in the bedroom area. They all need to be cleaned um, every month or two uh, to make sure that you have good circulation of air coming from your rooftop air conditioners. Just to the center of the kitchen area, you have a smoke detector. The smoke detector um, has an LED light that illuminates every so many seconds. But to test this so that you're making sure that it's operating, if you press and hold the center uh, button right here, you'll, you'll hear the tone. And that tells you that your system is working. And when you see the LED light flash every five seconds or so, that tells you the batteries are good. So looking for the LED light flash and pressing and holding that button down for a few seconds is going to give the audible alarm. That tells your batteries are up. Now, 
if you don't get the light, LED light and or the sound, you should squeeze it and just pull down. There is a battery nine volt that you can take out and replace. So replace the battery if you don't have light warning and sound warning. Then do the test again. As long as you get the sound and light, you're okay. If you still don't get it with a new fresh battery, then you need to replace the smoke detector. As you come in the entrance of your coach, you'll see a touch control panel, which is your KIB control panel. This shows you what is going on in your coach and you have complete control of your coach here with this touch panel. So as soon as you touch it, it will illuminate and then you'll see the options for you to control at the bottom. So I can go to my home screen. My AGS screen is my automatic generator starter screen. The HVAC screen is my heating, ventilation and air conditioning screen. And of course my light lighting screen. So starting at the left, my home screen shows me my tank levels here and my battery levels, house battery and chassis batteries here. Whenever I press a button, like say water pump, you'll see that it turns a red color. That means it's on. So any of the ones that are in gray are off. If I press it again, it goes gray, so that's off. Tank heat, same way. If I press it, that's on. Gray is off. Once I get levels of fresh water, gray or black, in any one of my tanks, those will start to go up and they'll be blue. Since I have an LP tank, it's the same way. The LP tank uh, will show the level here. Living room kitchen lighting, so I can turn all lights on here, all lights off here. AGS screen is here. I can set the generator to come on and start so that if my batteries are going low, let's say I'm not plugged into shore power, then I would want to set up my AGS for runtime. So refer to your owner's manual for the AGS operations, but um, you want to make sure that your AGS is on, especially if you're dry camping, because the generator will start automatically. That's what it's that's what the name is, AGS automatic generator starter. If you go to your HVAC screen, you'll see I can control my heating and air conditioning. So whenever those modes are on, it shows the mode that's on. Cool mode. Auto mode heat pump mode, furnace mode, fan mode, or off. If I want to make the fans come on all the time, I can go to a low fan in the living room. If I want the low fan speed to be on on the air conditioner in the bedroom, then I would turn that to low fan on the bedroom. If I go medium or high, it will go to those settings or just auto will come on only with the compressor when it goes into heat pump or cool mode. Setting the temperatures is easy. I can see what temperature it already is inside, but if I want to adjust those temperatures, I just go up or down here. As long as I've selected a mode, that function will come on. So my air conditioners will come on now in the bedroom zone. Heat pump, of course, only the heat pump will come on then. Fan only or cool. If I leave it in the auto mode, the nice thing about auto mode is it selects furnace, heat pump or cool for the temperature you set. So if I set 71 and I leave it in auto for the bedroom or living room, that will automatically stay at that temperature and will adjust to cool or heat pump or furnace by itself. 
So it's nice to use. I like the auto mode because in the auto mode, whatever temperature I set, it will turn on the furnace or it will turn on the heat pump. It typically turns the heat pump on if you're plugged in before it turns the furnace on. But you can override that and turn on whichever one you like just by selecting that mode. There's ECO. ECO saves a little bit of uh, the um, electricity or uh, fuel that you might burn in your furnace by just bumping that temperature down about five degrees. So if you're going to leave the coach and you want to save a little bit on your, um, your environmental costs, uh, hitting the ECO button does that. Obviously, you can set up, run, enable program times uh, in more detail. Just refer to your owner's manual to do that here. Uh, moving on to the lighting screen, we touched a little bit about that, but I can go to any one of these locations and I can turn my lights on and off. Again, you can set the time, you can set the date. Um, all these settings uh, can be, you know, looked at and changed uh, from those setting screens. So if we need to change our time or day, we need to go to the HVAC screen here and then go to Setup, Set Time. So here we've got our day and time settings we can change here. And then when we're finished, we can just go back to our home screen. So we're in our dinette and we're going to go over the cabinets and the operation of the Dream dinette. If we open this cabinet, we'll see we've got our connections for our satellite on the back with 120 volt outlets. The uh, HDMI cables are labeled source, Blu-ray, and satellite. And of course, that's where you'd put your satellite receiver and plug it in and make your connection to your satellite. This is your Bose sound bar. It has a remote. This is our cabinet and our connections for our other AV TV operations here. You can see a small louvered plastic cover. That's our sensor for our room temperature. More storage here. And of course our lighting controls additional GFC outlets with USB charging ports. To fold this dinette into a bed, there's a lever that you release here at the base. Once you turn that clockwise or down, then you need to remove the cushions. And then you just push the table down. It sits into place. Then you can put your cushions back. And then our center cushion, which is in the back bedroom, just bring it up and then slip it in place. And then removing it and putting it back into the dinette the same way, just remove the center cushion. Have to move these out of the way to lift the table back up. So 
lift the table up, lock it back in position. and you're ready for travel. With your television, you'll have a remote control. Before you watch the television over the air or cable, you'll have to scan for those channels. And we talked a little bit earlier about leaving the television antenna turned on to make the scan. So in the overhead above the door, you have to turn your WineGuard uh, receiver on and then you'll get the, the uh, LEDs around it showing that it's on. Then you would turn your TV on to scan for channels. So to scan for a channel, you'd want to come over here to your three um, bars and go to setting. Then press the center button and then scroll all the way to the right until you see all settings here. Then press it again. And now you get the selection here for broadcasting and that's what you want to choose. So you go down, use your down arrow and then press the center button to choose it. And you want to go into auto program. So again, center button to choose the auto program. And now you want to hit the start because you want to search and store channels. So pressing the center button again to start. And it's going to ask you which channels do you want to scan. And regardless of watching air or cable, you're going to have to scan for channels. So you can do air or cable, or you can do both. In this case, we're just going to do the air channels. So we're going to choose air by the center button again, and it goes through a scanning process and it will tell us how many channels it finds. Now we're in a, we're inside of a building. So the, the, the scan is probably not going to show, um, too many channels. All right. No channels were found, obviously, because we're in the building. Now, if this would happen outside, you could, should, you would have to scan again. Um, when we're done scanning, we have our channel scanned. We can go back to the home page and we can view live TV. Obviously, if we would have got any channels that would scan, we would see them now. Um, if we go to source, by moving over one arrow, we can choose the source that we want to watch. Obviously, we're on TV now, but if we wanted to watch any of the other Blu-ray or those others, we could watch by moving the arrow over to that selection and then pressing the center selection button. Currently, there are no Blu-ray uh, receivers uh, installed in the coach, but if you had those, then you could watch those items. So again, you, if you want to scan for cable, you have to turn the over the air WineGuard receiver off, and then you would scan for your cable channels to watch cable if you had part cable available. That part cable plug is outside, and I'll show you where that is a little bit later but that has to be plugged in for you to watch cable, unless you're watching one of these other uh, selections here. So we'll turn the TV off and we'll move on to the next area. So we've moved back into the kitchen area and we'll start with the overhead cabinets. Inside the cabinets, you'll notice that we've labeled 
uh, certain notices and warnings, but we've included all of the coach information, VIN number, and gross vehicle weight information along with paint codes. This is your coach information packet, warranty registration. All of the files in this case um, will help you understand your coach and the paperwork that's in here will help you get the warranty registration filed. So make, make sure that you go through here, fill out your warranty registration cards and mail those in. Um, all of your service bulletins are in here along with your uh, owner's operator's manual. In addition to the black manual paperwork is an additional one here with all of the Freightliner, owner's warranty, and ch chassis operator's information, along with your owner's manual from Cummins. There's a hubcap wrench here with your chassis information. We'll show you how to use that. But these information packets um, come with every new Mark coach. So be sure and go through your warranty and registration information here. Up in this cabinet, you'll notice a cord, 120 volt outlet here. This needs to be plugged in to operate your microwave. Our sink has removable covers. Those can be stored over here. The microwave handle is here. Numar installs an additional locking mechanism to keep the door closed during travel. So you'll notice that you'll, you'll need to push it to close and that will keep it closed during travel. These two removable covers have a cutting board on the back side. So they serve two purposes, two functions. There's a cutting board on each one. This is your true induction range. The um, pans that you would use here have to be magnetic. Once you put the magnetic pan on the surface on either side, you will turn it on here for the power. And then you make your adjustments here. If the pan is not magnetic, it won't sense there's a pan there, and this will automatically just shut off. To, to remove there, and then you can see it did shut off. So to remove this and use it outside, just grab a hold of each side, lift up, and you'll be able to unplug it right here and take it outside. So you can do cooking outside or inside, your choice. And just reinsert it back in place. And then put our cutting boards back on here. Yeah, you want to make sure that your stove top range is cool before you put these back in place. There is additional drawer space down below here. When you get your coach, your extra set of keys, remotes, and house filter wrench, um, the remote for the rear curtain in the toy hauler area is here. We'll go over that later. There's a mounting bracket here for the passenger seat. Uh, this inserts into the armrest on the right side of the passenger seat so that you can um, mount a iPad or other electronic device here and that holds it in place and you can turn it and make the adjustments here. Uh, Numar also includes your touch-up paint um, for each color 
um, in your paint scheme. So in case you need a little touch up, you've got that here. Those are our covers, sink covers, more drawer space here. And then over here is just a small storage space in the front of the sink and then a larger one here with your trash receptacle. And oh, there's a window here. It has uh, dual crank openings for fresh air with screens on both sides. On the bottom side of your microwave uh, is where you would insert the screens that come with that. Those are included here. Uh, we have our double door stainless steel nor cold refrigerator. Uh, to turn the refrigerator on, just press the on off button, but you have to hold it for a couple of seconds. So press, hold to about three seconds. Uh, that turns it on. Now you can see the LED is on for the freezer. Uh, and so to turn the freezer temp up or down, you would just press up is plus. Temperature warmer would be a lower number. To adjust the temperature in the lower compartment, press the lower compartment icon. The LED will display. Now you can turn the temperature cooler by going to a higher number. And then the last icon or the moon is if you want to slow the fan speed down and the compressor speed, you can just press that and that will slow down those two. Um, the compressor and the fan slows down to help reduce noise and also to help reduce the amount of power that it uses. So you could use that at night perhaps uh, to save energy and to make it a little quieter. To open and close the handles on the side, just push in and pull towards you to open and close. They self-lock, so you won't need to turn any lock on. The door, of course, uh, has its own switch for the light. The shelves are adjustable up and down. And to close, it is also self-lock. To turn the refrigerator off, just press, hold for a couple seconds, and the refrigerator is off. We have our pantry here, our pantry cabinet doors. Just below those, we have our vacuum. Down is off, so you can sweep um, the floor here, lift it up, sweep in. That goes down into a receptacle in the baggage area. If you don't want to sweep, you want to use the accessories that come with the InterVac system, then those would be plugged in here. If you'd rather use the accessories to sweep the floor than a broom, which would be here, we have the InterVac accessory bag that's in the baggage compartment area. Those accessories are all here. The hose would be inserted here. There is a warning here that you know tells you you should have the dust or filter bag in the vacuum before you insert it. The same warning tag is here. So that would need to be removed first. So you want to remove your warning tag here. And 
and then you would want to plug your hose in here and then the on off is controlled right here at the handle and of course your accessories would go here once you depress this on off switch the led light will come on and you can hear uh, the vacuum is on now so then you can go ahead and sweep to turn it off same thing just press once and it turns off if the led light does not come on when you depress the switch there is a uh, battery underneath here that needs to be changed if that would happen if you need more instructions on how this operates you can scan this qr code and go online to learn more about your system or just refer to your owner's manual in the black bag when you're storing uh, the hose, since that is the on-off switch, want to make sure that it's stored so that uh, nothing's going to bump up against that um, and turn it on inadvertently. We're moving into the half bath here. And as we go in, we see a shower sink and our toilet. So let's move over into the shower area here. You can see that you can make the adjustment to either the handheld or the shower. This is our hot and cold adjustment on and off. It has a fold down seat if you'd like to sit down and shower. You'll notice that the door is a slider, but it has a lock. So just make sure before you travel that that lock is engaged or down so that door does not slide while you're traveling. So that would be for showering. And when you're finished, just close this all the way and then lock it. There's a skylight here above. There's a discharge. And you have your fantastic vent here. Uh, this fantastic vent operates just like the one in the kitchen. There's a wall switch here. The wall switch has the on off the same as it did for the kitchen. This is on and off. There's on. And as the lid goes up, you can hear the fan come on. You can adjust the speed here. And uh, if there is moisture in the air to the point where the rain sensor might not allow that to come on, Again, disabling the rain sensor is easy. Just hold the down button for three seconds and the rain sensor LED light will come on red. And then the rain sensor is disabled and you'll be able to operate the fan like this. If you want to turn it off manually, you can, or you can turn it on manually just by cranking the black knob here. So I can actually, even when it's on, I can close it and turn it off manually. Um, again, I would want to do that at, at the control um, as long as it's working. So now you can see the fan and the lid are both down and off. There is a small black removable cover that is the fuse for the fan. When that's inserted, you'll see a red LED light come on telling you that you have power. If you'll notice, there's a red LED glow there. <clears throat> as long as you see that red LED glow, you know your fuse is good and powered up and there's power to the fan. You have your medicine cabinet and storage here. Just to the right and below, we've got our 120 volt outlet here. It is GFCI protected. If the GFCI trips, this one is resettable. Uh, if it trips, that light will go out. So there's no power here now or on any of the other GFCI circuits in the coach. So if you're not getting power in the kitchen or another outlet that's GFCI protected, this one might be tripped or another. You want to make sure to go to that outlet and reset 
by depressing that top button so the green light comes on then you know it's working again there's more cabinet space on the other side here this cabinet contains our 120 volt and 12 volt breakers and fuses uh, also our resettable fuses if for any reason you have an appliance that stops working you can check here for if it's a 12 volt appliance or feature function those labels f1 f2 going all the way down to f26 are labeled here so if let's say your awning quit working that is an f6 so then i would go here to f6 and check my awning fuse if it was blown i have spare fuses up here i would get a fuse that's the same size and reinsert it throwing the old fuse away and then that function for the awning should begin working again so all the appliance functions are labeled here for our 12 volt system if it's a 120 volt appliance and for any reason that appliance may not work or it's not coming on you'd want to come over here and check that label for that product let's say it's the microwave here's the microwave breaker to the left is off to the right is on so you can see here our refrigerator is turned off I'd want if my refrigerator wasn't coming on I'd check this if it was off I'd turn it back on now whenever these might trip for some reason they don't trip all the way over to the left they typically trip and they're only slightly over maybe towards the center to reset that I need to manually push it all the way to the left and then back to the right to reset it so just keep that in mind if you see one that's tripped it's only going to be about there you have to go all the way to the left and then back to the right to reset it to turn it on all of our 120 volt uh, breakers are here engine block air conditioners inverters cooktop um, microwaves refrigerators are all in this area this is our main breaker here's our main to the pole so if our main breakers are off none of these are going to come on okay these breakers actually are for the power that you're going to get through the inverter circuits in the kitchen like your microwave and refrigerator so as long as your inverter is turned on this sub panel it's labeled here sub panel these breakers here these will operate and work as long as the inverter is on these work in the, t in the upper half always when your generators on or you're plugged into shore power so close that when you're finished this is the dometic toilet this is not the macerating one but this flushes just simply by depressing the foot pedal here and of course we have the light switches here on the wall panel for our vanity we can turn our water pump on here backlighting high and low and ceiling moving into the bedroom area we have our sliding pocket door to release the door and go in the closed position for the bedroom we have to push down to unlock and then we have to move it over as soon as this lines up here in the front it will automatically relock in the closed position you can see it locked so now I can't open the door unless I push back down to unlock and then open the door the other way now when it travels all the way to closed position there you'll see it relock so now it's locked there and it won't slide this way so if you're traveling you want to make sure this door 
is locked before you travel so it doesn't slide back and forth. At the nightstand, you'll see that we have a 120 volt outlet and USB storage space below. Overhead storage here. There is a 120 volt outlet in the back wall there. You'll notice uh, the two panels here uh, in the overhead are illuminated. These control the lighting circuits and they're labeled ceiling, courtesy, um, high and low, back lighting and accent lighting there. The shades on both windows on either side are manual and they have a window that's a slider window. So you can, you can open and close that window here and then lock. The bed base lifts up, you can lift that up, and you can see we have additional storage below. Uh, the hole in the panel is so you can lift the panel out to access uh, the motor and electrical operating components underneath uh, those two panels. The nightstand on this side of the bed is the same as that one. It has the 120 volt outlet and USB plug in. Here you have your temperature control for the rear zone and your speaker controls for the two speakers on the ceiling. If you're in house mode and you wanna hear that, what's playing on the radio in the back here in the bedroom, just turn these speakers on or off, or you can have one or the other on it. You can choose if you want one or two. Above, we have the same type of filtration for our air conditioning and heat pump. You wanna make sure and have those removed the same way. Keep these filters clean, and then after they're clean, just put them back in place. Those louvers lock. You shouldn't really need to do anything with the ones on the driver's side. That's just your discharge cool air and or discharge warm air, depending on what mode you have the air conditioner and heat pump or cool. In the center of the room, we have our CO2 detector. You can test it similar to the smoke detector in the front of the coach. Just press and hold the center button and you get the warning sound and you get the, the LED light flashes. That tells you that your battery is good and that it would sound in an alarm for CO2. If you don't get the sound or the light, just slightly squeeze it, pull down, and replace the 9 volt battery. After you replace the 9 volt battery, do the same test to make sure the sound and the LED light are working. We have our wardrobe space here. There is a large decal um, that we put in this cabinet area with all of the model and serial numbers of all of the appliances in the coach. So if you ever have a, uh, an appliance that needs to be replaced or was replaced, you're not sure what model you need, come back here. The model and serial number of the original appliance is here. There's an additional outlet there that's plugged in over here to our television. Just below the TV, we have a cabinet here that's another AV or audiovisual cabinet where we could put our satellite receiver and our satellite hookup is here along with 120 volt outlet for the receiver in that compartment more drawer space here and below. And on the wall, we have our lighting control, again, for ceiling, dresser, accent, high and low. And we have our slide out control in and out for the bedroom slide. 
We want to make sure before we operate this to read the warning labels, not allow children to use it, and make sure before we run the slide rooms in either direction that there's nothing on the floor or on the outside of the coach that would be in the way uh, for that operation. These are not a momentary switch. You have to hold the position of the switch out until it's all the way extended or in until it's all the way retracted. There is an egress window here in case of an emergency where you would have to exit the coach and the directions on operating or opening this window are here. The pull handles are on the, here, they're labeled red. Again, just opening these on both sides, then pushing the window out is the way you would exit. You can relatch both of them here. There's no screen here. Okay, so we're at the front of the coach here and we're gonna demonstrate uh, the lighting on the coach. So we're gonna do the marker lights first. You'll notice um, on the top and sides, all the marker lights are on now. And now we're gonna turn on the headlights, bright and dim, and our turn signals. All right, as we move over, you'll see that we have uh, the, the hood has a release inside, we'll show you later, but the, the, the latch is released. So after you release that, you just lift up on the hood and there's a prop rod here. So you just pull the prop rod down and insert here and that locks it in place. So you'll notice here, uh, starting on the driver's side, you've got your wiper washer fluid. Uh, as you work your way over here at the top, you've got your oil transmission fluid, oil fill and oil dipstick, and your engine coolant. You wanna make sure that your engine coolant stays within the min and max level uh, for cold and minimum here. Uh, you don't want to add any fluid uh, if the engine's uh, been started or warm. You want to wait till it's completely cooled off to add any fluid. You'll notice here this is our charging port for our refrigerant for our air conditioning in the cab. Just beside that we have a gauge that measures the amount of uh, vacuum that's going through the air filter. So if that uh, is in the red range, we want to change the air filter. Um, this is, of course, the intake uh, for that filter. Um, this is a front engine diesel. Uh, you'll notice here it says air filter service instructions. Uh, uh, they're written here. Um, this is the air distribution box for the HVAC system in the front of the coach. Um, you also have the amount of charge uh, for the refrigerant here. Over on the corner at the end here is your block heater plug. The block heater plug has a plastic cover on it and that cover can be removed to the little latch in the top corner. That latch, just pull on that and that opens so you can Make sure that your block heater is plugged in. Um, this is the cord uh, for your block heater. You got to make sure that's a 110 volt plug. You want to make sure that's in, and then you can close that cover just like that. So when you're done servicing in the front, just release the prop rod here and lock it in place and close. We're at the front uh, passenger corner of your coach and you'll see there's a rear view camera uh, and this is for when you turn your right turn signal on uh, that gives you the view uh, for this side of the coach so that you can make sure that there's nothing in your lane when you turn. There's one on the opposite side as well for when you're turning uh, towards the driver's side. 
Uh, this mirror has a, an adjustment here. If you, you need to make uh, a big adjustment on the mirror, you can uh, loosen these three um, Allen screws and you can tilt your mirror or turn it. Uh, all the way up at the top, you'll notice an awning that goes all the way uh, down. There's an awning remote here uh, for open and close. So press B for open. And if you press it again, okay, so B will open and then press it again, it stops, and then A is closed. To turn on the LEDs, there's a switch on the inside. So that's your remote for your awning. Uh, there's a sliding cover here that you can push up to uh, block the button so you don't inadvertently press them. So you can put that on your keychain. We're at the end of the awning, and you'll notice there's a sensor here at the end. And what that is, is if there's a lot of motion from wind, this will sense that motion and turns the retract on for the motor so that the awning stows and doesn't stay out when, when it's a windy day. So uh, just to simulate that, I'll go ahead and grab the end of the awning and move it, and the shake sensor will know that there's uh, simulated wind and should retract the awning. So you can see just that motion there and the awning is going to retract automatically. So if you, were, if you weren't around and the wind kicked up and the awning started to move, it would automatically retract. They don't recommend that you leave your awning out in windy conditions or rain. Uh, because the rain, even though it, most of it will come off, makes the fabric heavier and in a downpour it may be too much weight and then it would not hold up uh, with the arms. So if it's going to rain or it's going to be really windy, uh, it's best to just retract your awning. Of course we've got your slider window. Your uh, front tire has the air pressure uh, instructions for the amount of inflation right on the tire. Going back to our first compartment, we have our LP tank. You'll notice that there is no enclosed uh, compartment for the LP tank, that's just for safety. Uh, the LP tank has its own regulator, that it's the house regulator underneath this cover. So if any adjustments need to, be uh, need to be made to the regulator, they're underneath this cover. You'll have to loosen these uh, two bolts here to get access to that. This is the valve that turns it on and off. So if you happen to smell LP, uh, you wanna make sure to come out here and turn it clockwise to turn the LP off. There's a gauge here. Uh, this gauge uh, is connected to the inside panel, so it should read the same whether it's a half a tank here, it should be a half a tank on the inside display panel. This is the fill port, and this is the fill uh, port uh, stop. So uh, these two uh, valves are operated when the tank is being filled. Our next compartment has a lock on it and an interior light here for on and off. There's a panel on the back here with an ABS cover. So we take that off. We'll notice that all of the fuses that you can see are labeled here, along with our battery disconnect and our charge bridge solenoid. Uh, some of the fuses are replaceable style like these. Some are resettable fuses like these. So if at any time, for instance, your entrance or entry step wasn't working, you would go to F7 and you would check F7 fuse, which is right here, and make sure that 
that it's working or that it's on or it's inserted. If it's inserted but it's not working, you can pull the fuse out, check it, make sure that it's good. If it's not, you'll need to replace it. Just going from the top left to the right, this is the battery disconnect, which disconnects the house batteries from the coach. This is the charge bridge solenoid. And these are our two fuse panels that are labeled here. This is our bi-directional isolator relay. Um, it connects our batteries together from the house and the chassis so one can help charge the other. There's two small labels on these two fuse holders. Uh, this is your solar panel and this is your chassis voltage and they're both labeled with the size of fuse they would need if they have to be replaced. To the right is your inverter. This inverter charges your batteries as well as operates uh, the sub panel for your appliances. Just to the left of our fuse panel, we have our plug that goes up to our TV. Our television can be pulled down so that now this turns into our outside entertainment center. The TV has an adjustable arm. You can grab a hold of the arm and pull it out and adjust or tilt uh, to the left or right. You have your radio. Your radio here uh, can be turned on and off and be paired with Bluetooth. Of course, this is your volume and your tuning here and your selection for band. This is your on and off here on the top left. So when you're finished here, just turn that off. There is also a USB port here. You can just close this and there's a magnet here on the back side of the arm. So when you close this, it keeps the arms together so that it's in a, there's an all, um, another magnet here so that arm stays closed when the magnets come together. You can hear it close. So if you lift that up, just store it, just push back and make sure to lock it in place. The Velcro straps hold this panel uh, against our fuses and our disconnects. There's an additional plug here for other accessories, GFCI protected, and of course the light that we showed you earlier. To lock this compartment, it's a black key to lock and unlock. There's a number here, the number is 415. Just match the number to the key, 415. And then I can close it. Close it and lock this compartment. Now the compartment's locked. To unlock, just turn it vertically. Now it's unlocked. Moving over to the door, the entrance door and steps. The steps automatically open when the door opens, but if the screen stays closed, the steps won't come open. So let's open this up to look. So our screen door, if we would pull it away from the main entrance door, there's a magnet here, but we can pull that. If we close that, you can see the steps will also close. If you want the steps to stay out, there's a step override switch, which I'll turn on. And once I press that in the overhead, the steps will no longer <clears throat> activate when the, when the screen door closes. 
So now they stay out. So this is the, you'd wanna have that on um, so that the steps don't keep going in and out as you go out in and out of your coach. To lock and unlock the door, <clears throat> you can do it manually here um, and with the keys. Uh, there's numbers on the keys as well. So if we just pair the right key with our lock, we can unlock or lock here or at the bottom one here. You can hear it lock and unlock. Now, obviously, if we're inside, we would want to lock it here for the deadbolt or here just for the door handle. This red lock is just for the screen. So once the screen closes, we can lock the screen door if we'd like. That's unlock, so you can open the screen. And then the magnet keeps the screen against the door. There's a panel here, so you can close this panel after you open the screen or close it. There is a blind here. So you can get fresh air in or you can block the sunlight with that screen and keep your coach bug proof when you close this door or the screen door. There's a speaker here that's uh, connected to our outside entertainment center. Our next compartment over is our freshwater tank. Uh, the freshwater tank has a drain here. If we need to empty the tank, we just open this drain like this. That's open and up is closed. Uh, this is a slide room controller for the bedroom slide out. Uh, when you turn it on, there is an LED display that comes up in the window. That's the amount of amperage that will be uh, used to open and close uh, that slide out. Next compartment over is our, um, our vacuum and our accessory bag. Um, all of your accessories are inside here. And we'll go inside the coach in a little bit and we'll demonstrate that, but you can use this vacuum right here and attach it to this opening. There's a, there's a slot here you can lift up and you can attach your vacuum right here. And you can use uh, your accessories outside if you'd like. We have the X, the, uh, we have our interior light here. Uh, this, of course, is the plug for our vacuum here. And this ABS cover uh, covers the controls uh, for your main patio awning above. Just above this baggage compartment is your propane furnace. It's a suburban furnace. There's a warning here. Uh, don't block the opening and hot. So when your furnace is operating you want to make sure to keep anything away from here because it's uh, it's an intake and an exhaust the exhaust is coming out here so it's going to be extremely hot and you want to touch it or get anything close to it uh, we have a marker light here of course we have our our slide for the bedroom is open now there's an access panel underneath that you can access the motor for the slide room and it's an electric motor. This is another storage compartment with your tank heat plugged in here for your tank heaters. Uh, the tank heaters have to have uh, a small amount of fluid in them uh, in order for them to operate. Uh, we'll refer to your owner's manual for the amount, uh, but if the tanks are empty, the tank heater won't come on. This is an additional plug, GFCI and interior light. 
So uh, moving back past our slide out, uh, we have our rear entrance door. The rear entrance door and handle are the same as the front with the steps that open and close when you open the door. And of course, this is the entrance to our toy hauler area. Everything is the same as far as the door locks, handle, screen, and blinds, and step override switch. So if we wanna override the steps to make sure they stay out. So if we want to override the steps, the step override switch is just inside the door, not in the overhead. In our next compartment back, just a storage area. And our last one is more storage. So this is an exterior vent uh, to the toy hauler area. It has a manual handle control so you can open and close this vent for air circulation inside. Just above the door, uh, you have your patio light, and this is your window that you can crank open uh, from the inside for the toy hauler area. If you notice in the corner there, you've got your drip rail. Um, of course, the water that comes off the roof comes down the drip rail and comes down the either end, the front or back. We have our marker lights at the top. Our, our uh, rear view camera is in the center at the top. And you can see this door we're gonna open. And when the door comes down, there's two rubber pads <clears throat> that come down and, and uh, those uh, ground the door on um, the base so that you can uh, move your uh, toys in and out. We've got a rear marker light for brakes here. We're gonna do a quick demo on the rear lights next so you can see how those look when they're working. All right, so we're gonna demonstrate the marker lights, brake lights, and the rear backup lights. So that's the brake lights on. Marker lights on. Turn signal left, turn signal right. So now he started the coach, we're gonna put it in reverse. So you can see our, our backup lights should come on here. So these are your backup lights. All right, now we'll turn the coach off. So to open the door uh, to access the inside of your toy hauler, there's a lever up here with a lock. And we're gonna get a close up view of it, but you can lock the lever here and then unlock. And then to open it, the handle's here, but there's a trigger that you have to reach up with your index finger and pull down. So you pull that down, releases the handle. Now. You pull the handle down and that unlocks the door all the way. You can see now the door is coming down. It kind of balances by itself, but you have to help it down. It won't fall on you. You have to pull it down. And as you're pulling down, you walk your way towards the back. So I'm walking my way back and I'm pulling down. And it's a positive pull. It won't it won't fall, you just push down. And once you're all the way down on your rubber stops, then you flip the other ramp down and you're ready to load or unload. In the interior right now, we've got the table and the bed lift, which folds out into a dining room area or setting. Uh, this can be removed. Uh, there's three legs uh, that come out of the floor. 
So we can take this table out, remove the legs, and then we can fold this back into a bed um, or just lift it up out of the way. So we're gonna show you how to do that now. So these are installed with uh, three locking pins. So you just turn it until it goes in, turn it to lock, and then tighten it here. So just the reverse of that. Now the leg is tight. So to unlock your legs, you just rotate counterclockwise. Then you can unlock and remove. All three legs are the same. After you put the leg, or I take the leg out, you want to put these caps back on. And that covers the whole opening. So if you're going to use this as a sofa, you'd want to use the support leg. So moving that support leg down to the center, there's an unlock pin on the back. So just press the unlock pin and rotate it down. Then when it's in the center, you'll hear it lock back into place. So there you're locked. And now you have the extra support uh, for when you're using it as a dining table or sofa. Um, or if you use it as a bed, when it's folded out this way, you can see the locking mechanism is here. So you press that, open it up, and you can see it locks back in to that hole. So now you're locked in place. Now you can use it as a bed. You'll need to do both sides the same. When you want to fold this back up, you just unlock that, and it will lock back into place here. So that's set up as a couch now. But to lock this back up, just press on the tab back here. In this spot here, press on that. It'll unlock, and then just fold it up, and you can hear it click and lock back into place there. You've got two sets of bunks or beds here. Uh, if you want to just lower the one, you would leave the four pins in, which are here. All right, so I want to leave those in if I just want to lower one, uh, the lower one down, and that switch is right here on the wall. So then I would just lower this down. But if I want to lower both of the bunks, then I want to pull all these four pins out of each one of the rails. So that's a rail. Pull that pin. Pull this one. And the other two on the other side. So now I've got all four pins pulled. I can come over here to my wall lever and I can bring both beds down now. So the micro switch for the top bunk stopped the upper bunk, but the lower one will continue on down. So now both the upper and the lower bunks are ready uh, for sleeping. What you can do now is take the ladder and set your ladder up for the upper bunk here. So now you have access to the upper bunk and the lower bunk. Again, we talked about it a little earlier, but before you put weight on the lower bunk, you want to lower these two arms down to support that weight. Uh, whether you're folding it into a bed or if you're folding it into a sofa, then you just want to lower this leg down to support people that might be using it as a sofa or uh, a dining table and sofa. So the reverse of that to store it would be 
the same. You would lower these down to the center and remove the ladder. So you can store your ladder, uh, the three legs and the table on the top bunk, and then you're ready to stow the bunks. Press up, the bottom bunk meets the top, and then they both go up, and then you'll have to put your four pins in to lock them in place. Okay, now we take our locking pins, since we're all the way up. So in the back here is an extra uh, 120 volt outlet. Both windows have a window covering. This is an escape window, egress window. So in case you would have an emergency and need to escape, this is, this is the window you'd want to go out of. Just release the red handles up and go out this way. Both of the other windows on either side have a crank uh, and screen to open and close, just like the windows in the front. Just open and close here for ventilation. Same with this window over here. If you need additional uh, ventilation by not opening a window, this is the vent that you can open for air to come in without opening a window. It opens either way, front or back, and that allows airflow in this compartment. It has another one just like that up here. So open, close, or open, closed. Another 120 volt outlet here. There is a dryer vent here. If you install the dryer in this area, there are smoke detectors on both sides of the ceiling here. Um, they test the same way as the one in the front. Press and hold the center. You'll hear the tone. You can also see the LED light. If you don't see the LED light or hear the tone, Pull that cover down and replace the 9 volt battery. Um, the speakers here in the back are integrated into the sound system. And of course, the uh, fantastic vent can be opened manually with the black bar. Um, it is turning on and off here with the wall switch, just on and off, the same way as the one in the bathroom. We have uh, the patio light here. There is a fuel pump here. Uh, the fuel pump is for the auxiliary fuel tank, uh, dinette lighting, exterior lighting, and step lighting. Door locks are the same as the front door. There's an independent thermostat for this rear area compartment of the toy hauler. So you'd need to turn this on and then you will be able to uh, go to mode and then you can choose uh, to turn on the air conditioner uh, in this rear zone. This is the temperature sensor for the rear zone and of course this is the lighting control in this compartment. Just above that we have a cabinet for storage, 
uh, rear radio for playing with these speakers, television with remote in the kitchen. The remote is there. And our lighting control for the entire coach is here. That works in conjunction with our wall switches so we can turn lights on and off from different locations. Uh, and that's the junction box for those controls. We have more storage here. And of course our fire extinguisher if needed. There is a manual light switch here we can turn on and off. And our door to the front of the coach. So the, for your tie down straps for stabilizing your cargo in this area or your motorcycles, ATVs, whatever, these are your tie downs and they can be moved to any one of these locations forward and back. You just have to lift up and turn slightly and then slide it to unlock. And then you can put it into any location you like. Just put it into that location, push down, turn it slightly, move it into place, and now you're locked in that spot. Again, basically just lift, turn, slide, and move it where you want. You have a remote control for the screen on the back, uh, up and down. Just press once and the screen will go all the way down. You can stop it at any point and then continue on or go back up. So that's fully extended. Then we can re just retract with one press. To close it, it's just the exact opposite. You just flip up the small ramp. Now you're going to have to grab the corner at the back and lift. Be sure and use your legs, not your back. Lift up and just walk your way towards the bottom of the door and you close it. Now the latch just locks and you'll hear it click. Once the handle is locked in place, this lever will snap. You'll hear it click and that's latched, but then you can additionally lock here if you like. So that's latched. The door is closed. But in, in addition to that, I could lock it if I want. Of course, at the center bottom, you've got your Bargman plug for tow vehicle or trailer and hitch. Coming around to the Driver's side, we've got a marker light here. You'll notice there's a warning here that the connection for your 120 volt uh, shouldn't exceed uh, the 50 amp rating. Uh, your shore cord is already plugged in, but once you extend it, you wanna make sure and put it in this rubber uh, uh, connection so that it stays in place. If you look at the back of the compartment, you'll see the voltage reading uh, for our, our plug once it's plugged in. The LED display, it monitors the power. If there's a fault, that small window will tell you the fault. In addition to that, the surge guard protector above that is a transferring switch it transfers either using the power from our shore cord or the gray one from our generator. Our generator is priority. So if we turn our generator on, 
it's going to choose that that surge guard is going to choose the gray cord for power and disconnect uh, from our shore cord if you turn your generator off it will reconnect to the shore cord for power and that that is always a priority is set for the generator there's a small connection here for your cable if the park that you're at has a cable connection you can connect that here and you'll be able to watch cable inside we'll go over that later our next compartment is our fuel fill um, there's a fuel dispensing uh, shut off switch here we can turn that off uh, obviously we don't want to have any flames um, or any smoking when we're in this compartment this is the fill for our fuel tank and this is the dispenser uh, so you can fill your um, motorcycle ATVs or whatever you've got outside you can use that to fill out of the tank that you put fuel in uh, before in addition to a fuel cutoff um, on the exterior here to turn off the fuel there's another one inside as well the next compartment forward is more storage and then we have our sewer hose storage area here we have our diesel our diesel uh, fill here so that's where you would put your diesel fuel for the front engine front engine diesel uh, of course this is our full wall slide our full wall slide is for the whole living room area our next compartment forward is for our um, tank uh, and sewage when we want to drain them uh, we can empty our gray tank and our black tank here both of those valves are here and here we have our sewage holding tank and our gray tank or wastewater tank and the valves for those there's a, a forward one for a forward valve one for the tank here and then of course this is the one that empties out uh, and goes out our hose here so we would connect our hose here out and then to our sewage when we're done we want to close our valves and put our cap back in place and make sure that we rotate it clockwise because if we want that to lock in place and then put our floor cap back in. on. Moving forward into the next compartment. This is our water control and water bay compartment. We can turn our water pump on. We can fill fresh water here this is a shower um, outside shower for cleaning or rinsing you'll notice here uh, this is where you would attach the hose either for fresh water fill or black tank rinse so to fill our fresh water tank or get fresh water in the coach we have to take the cover off here we want to attach a hose type fitting connection here with no more than a max pressure of 60 um, pounds. That will fill our freshwater tank if we have this handle turned up to freshwater tank fill. So if this is connected, our source is turned on, and our handle is in the up position. Our freshwater tank will fill. 
and it will continue to fill until it's completely full and there's a small overflow that you'll notice the water starts to come out the overflow when you see that you know your tank is full and then you can turn this off with this turn to the right that is when you would start to use the water out of the tank by turning the water pump on you can see the small led come on that means your water pump is on and you'll have water pressure coming from the inside when we're done uh, with emptying our sewage tank we can rinse it just by opening this putting our hose fitting here, turning the hose on, that is putting uh, fresh water and rinsing the black tank. Once you rinse your black tank, you would drain it the same way that you did uh, when you emptied your black tank out the sewer hose. So this would be the last step you take to rinse out the tank and rinse out the lines as well as the sewer hose that goes into uh, the drain so that everything's clean. Then you would close that after you disconnect. To operate the shower, you just uh, use the wand. You have to turn it on here and here for warm or hot and this one for cold. Uh, you can turn it on and off right here. So you can turn it on first here and then you can turn it on and off here. With your coach, when it comes new, is a filter. Um, this is your whole house filter. This is where you would insert it. So you would turn, unlock this and turn this off and then you would insert the filter and then put the cover back in place. So then all of the water that's going into your fresh tank is being filtered uh, before you use it or drink the water. At the base here, you've got your cold and your hot low point drains for winterizing. You would want to open these like that, and that drains the water out of all your cold and hot lines so that you can winterize uh, your coach for storage. If you're ready to winterize your coach, You'll, you'll notice in this compartment is the hose that's used to suck the winterizing solution into the water pump. It comes up, it goes into the water pump, and then it goes into all the uh, water lines um, in your appliances and in your drains by opening this one and closing this one, this water pump pulls that winterizing solution in and once you turn on all the valves in the shower the kitchen the bathroom and your all of your appliances so that you've got winterizing solution in it then you would turn the water pump off and put these back in the position that they were then your coach is winterized this compartment here that you're looking at has a protective box cover over the drain for your kitchen uh, water. Um, your wastewater that comes out of the kitchen area goes into this uh, small uh, tank and then it is pumped into the gray tank in the back. You have to have 120 volt power, whether that's uh, plug, you're plugged into shore power or your inverters on for that to drain the water into the gray tank from your kitchen. This control here is for the full wall slide moving in and out. It controls both of the motors. Uh, your, you have two motors on your slider and pulling it in and out and that's your motor controller. In our next compartment forward, we have more storage area. This is just a continuation of that compartment. Okay. 
And this is, uh, next compartment is our generator, our Cummins generator. You'll notice at the bottom of this compartment, you've got two small lanyards. Those lanyards are used to drain the water that accumulates in your air system. So every time you use your coach to get rid of all the water in uh, your air system, you should activate these by pulling them. That opens that small valve and it drains the water out of your air system. This is your Cummins generator. Operating instructions and manual are here. The on off switch is here for manually start. You can start it from the inside with the panel just by pressing the start here. You hear it prime and start and then down is stop. Once it starts, we'll go ahead and shut it off. So in addition to the on or start and stop switch, even if you start your generator, it won't send power in your coach unless you have this breaker turned on or up. So that has to be up. If it's tripped, it'll be kind of halfway in between. You have to go all the way off and then back up to get power from your generator. Just remember that. Um, if you've got your generator on and there's no power going in your house, come out and check that breaker. That has to be flipped on. If you manually start your generator outside, it turns off the function of automatic generator starter. So just remember, if you want your AGS on, but somebody comes out and manually starts it from here, the AGS function will no longer be working. You'll have to reactivate uh, it on your touch panel uh, inside. In our next compartment, we have our house batteries and our chassis batteries here, along with our DEF tank. To service the batteries, we can lift up the locks on both sides here and here. Just lift up. Now we can pull the tray out. We can open the batteries and check the fluid just by rotating these locks like that. We can lift these up. These are lead acid batteries. Check the fluid, add distilled water if needed, put the cover back on and rotate clockwise to lock it back in place. You should check your batteries, especially in hot weather because uh, you will lose fluid over time. You wanna keep the fluid above the top of the plates. That's how you check these batteries. Those are AGM batteries. They are maintenance free, so you won't need to add fluid to those. If you replace batteries, Look at the wiring diagram to make sure you have your connections correct before you turn the battery disconnect back on. If you're not getting any power in the house, there's a fuse. The fuse is right there. If that fuse is tripped, you'll have to replace that fuse before you'll get power out of your house batteries in the house. When you're done servicing, close the compartment slide the tray and then put your locks don't forget your locks put them back down in the slot and that locks the tray you'll notice there is no enclosure for the batteries because of the gases that the batteries produce you want to make sure that they're not in an enclosed area our jack system Solenoids you can see over there. If you need to add fluid uh, to your jack system, um, there's a 
uh, fluid port there that you would add uh, your fluid to. When you're done servicing in this compartment, just close the door here and lock if needed. On the outside of our full wall, we have a water heater. It's called a Truma Aqua Go. To open and close it, you'll see a little arrow there for closed. So just rotating it left opens this door lift up. And you've got these that hold the door. Uh, we have warning labels, caution labels here. Uh, we have a schematic drawing here. Of course, this is LP operated. Our main power switch is here, power on. To drain the tank, if you're gonna winterize it, it's just lift up here. And that's gonna drain your tank. Keep your, leave your filter out. I'll put this back just because, okay, our, our tank is drained now. Uh, that's to winterize it. And then you just close this and just store this uh, here, perhaps, um, just to get that out of the way. Then when uh, it's time to operate again, put this back in place. And then you're ready to fill the tank and operate. Just refer to your owner's manual for more instructions. But that's uh, basically how you would do the winterizing. There is a pressure relief valve here. If the tank is warm, uh, do not open that. Uh, that's just there uh, for uh, when the tank might be overheating, that pressure relief valve opens. Uh, you shouldn't be opening and closing that. and just turn clockwise to lock. Obviously, you're gonna have uh, hot air coming from this area, so you don't wanna put anything too close. Um, that, that air coming out is rather warm. Right now, we have the slide room moving in, and we always want to run the slide room in or out when we're on our air ride suspension. So, when we come to our destination, we're on our air ride, and that's when we want the slide to move out, then our jacks would go down. We want to run the slide room in when we're on air. So when we get to a destination, we want to check this gap. This gap is called a reveal. As long as this gap is about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch all the way around, we can run that slide room out. If we see that the distance between this fascia trim and this Z trim is touching, we don't want to run the slide room out until we get the coach in a more level position. Once we get it in a more level position, then the gap should be open far enough that we'll be able to run that slide room out. At the top of the slide room is a slide topper awning as the slide moves out or in, that unwraps a fabric that covers the roof of that slide room. So before you run that slide all the way in, you want to look on both ends to make sure there's no branches or uh, any maybe snow that got put under there uh, in, if you're in bad weather. Just make sure that nothing is blocking the movement of the slide as it goes in underneath the fabric, between the fabric and the roof of the slide topper. That's just gonna ensure that uh, when you close the slide, nothing is gonna get wrapped up in that fabric and damage your awning, your slide topper awning, or keep it from going all the way in. 